the ideal way of uh, pacemaker therapy, and this is now being considered as uh, so-called physiological pacing, which would not only cosmetically make the QRS better, but also hemodynamically, and where are we heading? This is uh, just a prelude to what is coming up from Parikshit and Santosh within a few minutes from now. We really do not know what is the ideal cardiac pacing strategy, uh, which would optimize the hemodynamic response. It has been elusive. Um, ever since the pacemakers, implantable pacemakers were introduced in 1950, the first of the pacemakers, where the mobility was restricted to the length of the cord and the lifespan was determined by the power source. Um, it has developed so much between 1960 and 2015. It all was more into making the battery last longer, leads becoming multiple and thinner, etc. cetera. Um, but then there was a significant improvement when people realized that the leads are the commonest problem. So then there came the leadless spacing technology. And then now there is this ongoing observation about another device where you can charge the battery externally. That I think is, is a big thing that is going to happen. Uh, we know that the RV apical pacing is bad, but then whenever there was an alternate site that was thought which would bring in uh, better hemodynamic response, it simply was believed that it is more of a hype rather than a great evidence uh, to prove that point. However, in the last eight to 10 years, uh, the pioneers of so-called physiological pacing, they thought that his bundle pacing or intraceptal left bundle pacing um, if is done for a bradyarrhythmia or for a heart failure uh, reason, it is going to be achieving better hemodynamic response. And in the last few years, at least, there is uh, enormous uh, evidence that has been accumulated, even though the long-term results have not been yet published. But the, the evidence is so very convincing that it has taken the electrophysiologist community, the pacemaker implanters community by storm. Um, I do not think anybody who is doing more than say one or two pacemakers in a month or so is not doing or not thinking about doing this kind of a physiological pacing. So I think, I don't remember really uh, when the electrophysiology community was so very keen in doing the pacemakers. And including me and several of the people here started a newer interest which has developed uh, in, in, in pacing therapy by so-called his bundle or intraceptal left bundle pacing. Um, any kind of a bradyarrhythmia today uh, where the pacemaker is indicated uh, looks like his bundle pacing or the left bundle pacing should be the choice of pacing. So what is happening is uh, uh, the, the theme which I would like to say here, apart from uh, the way of, of achieving the physiological pacing. Uh, very soon, it would be a common practice to avoid radiation to the implanter, to the team, and to the patient. And then it has been shown that it is possible. It is possible without fluoroscopy to keep the leads wherever you want. Either it is an RV lead, whether it is even at the his bundle, maybe in the RA, etc. We also have this technology which would aid in providing the better care to the patients with these kind of pacemakers. For example, remote monitoring of the devices. This is one of the examples which we encountered. Um, the leads, for example, typically at the his bundle, it's uh, more predisposed to having some problems as compared to the RV apical pacing. 
So it's a concern, how do we monitor them? A remote monitoring does help, for example, here one of the dislodged leads, the his bundle has gone into the RV. Patient is luckily uh, not very symptomatic. Because it's a red alert, we could actually make or so. Uh, increasing in the thresholds. So it is possible, even with the remote monitoring, uh, some of the disadvantages of newer technology uh, can be curtailed. Um, There's another one. And then what is the effect of uh, social media in the pacing technology? That I think I, we should also discuss. Not only simply what we do it in the lab. Um, social media is also affecting our way of doing anything, including your angioplasty or anything, including the pacemaker, for example. This is one of them where what you tweet is also discussed in some scientific conferences and uh, Social media is it's making everybody to be on their toes, everybody to be informative, uh, and then the kind of a interaction takes place. Thousands of experts who could actually look at your work and then they guide you. So that also is one of those uh, advances which I would consider. But ultimately, we should not have any leads, we should not have any macro foreign objects, so that the only answer then it could be a biological pacemaker. And uh, indeed, there is a proof of concept, whether it's a sinus node dysfunction or an AV block or intraventricular conduction defects, which you are treating for heart failure. There are cellular implants which could be directly implanted at the site where you want, which will, which will have that excitability, or simply you could introduce those cellular implants uh, through the coronary supply. There is also in situ genetic engineering by taking an injector into the site and you inject some viral mediated genomes, etc. So whether it is sinus node dysfunction, whether it is an AV conduction uh, problem, or whether it is an intraventricular conduction defect, looks like, if not in the immediate 10 years, by 20 years from now, I think the most physiological pacing could be one of these, wherein we have no leads, no batteries. Um, so this physiological pacing, I think, is going to also see its end, and then the biological pacemakers may become a routine practice. This is what is the hope, and I hope in, in my lifetime, at least, I would see those biological pacemakers do come and become a natural uh, way of practice. Thank you.